Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I will be painting the Chaos Legionary Kill Team, a project that frankly almost broke me. Recently I started to get back to Kill Team again and I only have a single Kill Team painted up my Orc Commandos. So I thought it would be nice to have a little bit more variety and have more Kill Teams at my disposal. And because I have a lot of Chaos guys already on my shelves, I thought that that would be the natural choice. That is when I face problem one. I have too many unpainted Chaos Space Marines. When you have 20, 30 Chaos Legionaries lying around, the prospect of putting a whole box of them together is not exactly exciting. No worries though, I can simply repurpose what I already own and kit bash anything I don't have a good replacement for, right? Well, mostly. Some models I could straight up take from the CSM kit, like the Gunner or the Icon Bearer. Some were obvious choices, like the Sorcerer for the Acolyte, or the Havoc with the Chain Cannon for the Heavy Gunner. I recruited my aspiring champion from the CSM Chosen. And finally, I went all out for the Anointed and used one of the Forge World Gar Vorbeck models. I already had a couple of simple warriors painted up, so I decided to skip those as well as the Shriftalon, Shriftalon, however you pronounce that. That left me with only the Butcher, but I didn't have any CSM with a double-handed chain axe. I also didn't have any double-handed chain axes at all, so it was time to build one. That's where things started to go wrong. Let's just say that I spent way too much time on this simple project and lost a lot of money to the swear jar. For information, that axe handle is not bent because I messed it up. It's bent because the Butcher is infused with the Rage of Corn and he bends his axes. I have an in-law explanation for it, so it's all good. That's problem one taken care of. Let's see how I tackle problem two, painting them up. I recently painted a CSM model, which I was quite happy with, so I thought let's just use that and try to achieve something similar, but use the same amount of time for seven minis that I used for that one. Sounds reasonable, right? Also, since these are space marines and have lots of flat surfaces, let's not use my tried and tested contrast method since it would end up too messy. No worries, <laughs> I can do this. It began nice and methodical enough. I started painting the golden trim immediately for multiple reasons. First, because it is the most annoying part of any CSM project. They have trim everywhere and it takes ages. Second, because I wanted to be fast and sloppy with it using a big brush. If I do it as the first step, I don't run the risk of messing up something nice that I already painted and since the minis are prime black, I can simply and relatively quickly correct any mistakes. Plus, some of the mistakes will be covered by other colors later down the line, so I don't have to worry about them too much. It took me a bit more than an hour, but I got all of the trim and even managed to apply a wash to everything. Well, mostly. With these guys you always find some that you left out. If you don't, you are a magician and please teach me your superior ways. I ended up making not too many mistakes, despite the speed and the big brush, so I was quite happy with myself. I thought I was making good progress. With the trim done, I turned my attention to the other details, finishing the rest of the metallics so I could change my paint water before moving to normal paint. Turns out that these guys have a ton of other metal parts as well. All the steel bits plus the bronze colors I used for some of the armor decorations took as much time as the trim itself. Note to myself, next time simply paint them gold. With that, I was already behind schedule, but I wasn't too worried because I could just do a quick job of base coating all the details. Well, about that. These guys have a ton of little details and since I went for models from different kits, they are quite varied as well, with some having a ton of cloth, like the Acolyte, or a lot of bone, like the Anointed. 
Had I been more reasonable, I could have glossed over these, but the maniac that I am needed to paint almost everything. So much for speed painting and my timetable, I guess. I also made some last minute stylistic choices here. Instead of using the usual black, gold, red color scheme, I decided to embrace the colors of the original CSM Sorcerer box art with the Horus Green Cloak and apply it to the whole band. Soon after, I went even further and added the green pauldron for most of the guys. Let's just say that these black legionaries still wear the colors of the Sons of Horus in memory of their lost gene father. At this point, I spent roughly four and a half hours painting the models and barely managed to base and shade every color. My biggest challenge was still ahead of me though. I hate black armor since it is a pain to paint it. You can simply use black and leave it at that, but it will look flat and boring. You can add some heavy metal style edge highlights inside the panels, but it will look cartoonish in my opinion. I wanted to go for the same style I did on the example model, a transition from red to black to a bluish shade across all the panels that still reads as black when they are on the table. Of course I spent hours refining that on the original model, so I can do that in less time on 7 models instead of 1, right? It is a bit more rough than on the original, but it will do, especially once we brighten up the areas around them. Speaking of which, let's look at those other areas. I only need to highlight all the cloth elements. all the leather parts And of course the faces, because I had to select models with their faces exposed since that is cool. Yeah, mistakes were made. And of course I can just put some contrast paint over it and leave it, I needed to highlight and shade everything. Alright, I'm still hanging in there, it has been roughly 7 hours of painting and we are getting there. Now for all those tiny details like the eyes, the plasma glow, and the sorcery effect.
they are far from perfect, but it will have to do. We are above eight hours now on this project, which is around three hours more than I expected. And I'll be damned if this goes over 10 hours. Time to highlight the metallics. Yep, we are back to the trim again. I am bringing back the shine, but trying not to cover up all the shading from the previous step. Normally, I would also give it an edge highlight, but at this point, I'm suffering from trimophobia, so this will have to do. Alright, I'm still alive and most of my sanity is still intact. Uh, only the base is left, let's finish this. Well, I say only, but other than some very basic colors, I have not really bothered with the bases so far. So now it is time to dry brush the stones a bit. Add some grass tufts. Shade them a bit so they are not so uniform. Yeah, I'm that insane. Plus now I'm seeing the end of the tunnel so I can be generous with my time. Then the final touch with some dry pigments and it is time to paint the base rims black as usual. And after roughly 10 hours of painting this is the whole band together. If you ask me, this is probably the most immersive painting experience you can get in Kill Team. By the time you are finished with painting all the trim and the details, you will embrace chaos naturally and swear your soul to the gods making you the perfect leader for these guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully I didn't scare you away from painting these dudes. As long as you avoid my mistakes and plan ahead, you will have a lot of fun painting them. And while I thought they looked a bit rough along the way, I quite like how they came out in the end. Let me know what other kill teams you would like me to paint. And if you like the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see similar content in the future. Thank you very much for listening and watching. See you in the next one.